This is the saddest plate appearance of all time. August 14th, 2011. The Marlins are hosting the Giants. Their pitcher is Jose Seda. His career ERA is 4.66, which is not very good, but he kinda has an excuse. See, the Marlins usually only used Jose Seda in a game when the game was more or less decided. Either they were up by seven or down by nine, something like that. In more than half of Seda's career games, his team was either winning or losing by at least five runs. He was basically just pitching because somebody had to pitch. That means he was dropped into some really awful situations. These are all the runs scored by all the opposing teams at the time Jose Seda entered the game. The green line is the scoring rate of an average baseball team. It's about half a run per inning, or four and a half runs a game. Seda, on the other hand, was handed some of the worst scenarios imaginable. Opponents would score eight runs by the third inning, 11 by the sixth, 14 by the seventh, and then the Marlins would say, well, have fun, Jose. So if his ERA seems a little high, it's because he was the guy who had to face offenses that were on fire. In reality, he did have pretty good stuff. Look at this pitch. It's clocked at 85 miles an hour, but he still makes it break pretty hard. It's really hard to hit, even if you're an experienced hitter like Eli Whiteside. The next batter up is not an experienced hitter. He is a pitcher, and his name is Santiago Casilla. So this part has nothing to do with the story, really, but I feel like talking about it. It's my video. I'll do what I want to. Years later, Casilla would go on to pitch what is known as an immaculate inning. That's when you strike out all three batters in an inning with just nine pitches. Nine strikes in a row. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, according to 2016 data, the basic odds of striking out a batter on three pitches are about 27 to 1. To do that twice in a row, the odds explode to 729 to 1. Three times in a row, the odds are about 20,000 to 1. An immaculate inning is actually even more rare than a no-hitter. There are 296 no-hitters on the books and only 86 immaculate innings, so Casilla's in pretty rare company. Anyway, Casilla's a very good pitcher, but he's never actually batted before. He's been in the majors for eight years. This is the first time he has ever held a bat. Because see, Casilla is a relief pitcher. Relief pitchers are even worse at hitting than starting pitchers. Their batting average is less than half that of an average hitter. They're so bad that half of baseball just made them stop doing it. Here's a tug of war between the American League and National League. Up until the 70s, the two leagues traded places all the time. One year the AL was hitting better, the next year the NL was hitting better. In 1973, the AL adopted the designated hitter, so its pitchers almost never batted ever again. Not coincidentally, the AL has had better batting statistics for the last 40 years straight. For pitchers who aren't used to batting, it can be kinda scary. Thanks to a mixed-up lineup card in 1999, Indians pitcher Charles Nagy had to bat despite being in the American League. I was surprised as anybody, he said. I still don't really know what happened. If a pitcher has to make a plate appearance he didn't plan on, he's often told by his manager not to swing. Just stand there, take the strike out, and don't hurt yourself. Clearly, that's what Santiago Casilla is thinking. Here he is stepping to the plate. All right, you know what? I lied. Here he is while the pitch is being thrown to him. He clearly isn't even trying to get a hit, but more than that, he's not even pretending to try. He's delivering a clear message to Seda. Just strike me out, man. Just get this over with. But Seda misses the strike zone. Ball one. No big deal. All he has to do is throw three pitches over the plate. This is going to be the easiest strikeout of his life. Huh. You're good, man. You're good. You, you struck out the last guy, and that was an actual batter. This one's on the house. He's letting you strike him out for free. The count, unbelievably, is now 3-0. An announced crowd of 20,000 people boos thunderously in unison. Okay, you know what? That is not 20,000 people. There's, like, nobody here. Let's just take this section as a sample. How many people do you see there? Maybe, like, 10? Let's extrapolate that. There are 738 seats in that section. If there are only 10 people in that section, it's filled to about 1.4% capacity. Now, in Sun Life Stadium, a.k.a. Joe Robbie Stadium, a.k.a. Pro Player Park, a.k.a. Pro Player Stadium, a.k.a. Dolphin Stadium, a.k.a. Dolphin Stadium, a.k.a. Landshark Stadium, a.k.a. Dolphin Stadium again, a.k.a. New Miami Stadium, a.k.a. Hard Rock Stadium, there was a max capacity of 80,000 people. In its baseball configuration, it was less than half that. This calculation is very basic, but it puts 522 fans in the seats. That's sad. Let's make it sadder. How many employees do you think are at this stadium right now? I'm about to do some unscientific estimation here, so please bear with me. First, we've got the players. 25 Marlins, 25 Giants, 12 Marlins coaches, 12 Giants coaches. Both teams have a small radio crew and a TV crew of about 10 people. They're joined by a handful of beat writer types. Let's give them five. 
Can't forget the umps for those. I'm gonna guess 40 security staff, ushers, etc., which I think is a little bit low, but I'm gonna run with it. Let's give the team store 10 people, and here's the big one: 200 people in vending, food, drink, etc., which I think is fair. Now it's a Sunday, so I think there aren't a ton of front office uh, personnel in the stadium. There's also a mascot and probably four sausage racers, a ball person and bat person for each team. That's four. An events and promotion staff of let's say 10, two official scorers, a multimedia crew to run the scoreboards and ads and whatnot, a grounds crew of 20 people, and 75 sanitation workers. Workers, which, if you think that's too high, keep in mind that this is an enormous stadium. 25 people at the ticket offices, and I almost forgot, four camera operators for the broadcast crews. You can yell at me in the comments if you want. You can yell at me if you think I got this wrong. You can yell at me for ending up with 529, just slightly greater than the crowd I estimated. I think it's entirely possible that the majority of people at this baseball game was paid to be there. That's amazing. Maybe it's a good thing that so few people were there to witness what happened. Or maybe it was beautiful, and it's a shame more people weren't there to see it. At any rate, I bet you can guess what happens next. And a four-pitch walk. And he didn't know what to do. Jose Seda just faced a batter who had never batted before, and wasn't even trying to bat, and he walked him on four pitches. He walked a man whose batting stance is this. Santiago Casilla tried to strike out, and it didn't work. He tried as hard as he could to fail, and he was so good at failing that he failed to fail. After ball four, Casilla just stands there. It's like he doesn't believe what happened. He doesn't know what to do with his bat. He goes back to the dugout to drop off his stuff, which you're not supposed to do. He's never been on base, and he has no idea what he's doing. Six years later, this remains the only walk of his career. A couple months later, Jose Seda's major league career would end for good. He would achieve further notoriety in one of the last games of his career, when his teammates piled up sandbags and locked him in the bathroom for an entire inning because they were bored. See, that's the thing about baseball. It just isn't that fun.